Uh, okay. Uh, Peter was talking about uh, uh, very Java EE stuff, but I'm so going to show you something that's totally different. So, how many of you know what play Primo Gris? So, some of you. It's basically also a web framework <coughs> where you can use Java or Scala, but it's very different compared to Vardin. It's stateless and it's much much more uh, low level. So you have to handle requests and responses, and it, it has its own template system and and stuff like that. <coughs> and it uses its own uh, web server, so you cannot use Vardin with it until now. So uh, I am going to. I have created a POC how to use Vardin with with Play framework. So I am going to create a. I have installed Play here, and I can just uh, now create a. Play application. Let's see. Okay, it's already was there. Okay, so now I'm I am creating a application. Its name, and I can choose if I want to use Scala. Or Java, but in this case, I am of course going to use Scala. Okay, have fun. So now I should have. <laughs> so now, now I have a existing Play application. Okay, I have to go there. <coughs> and first, let's. Uh, going to import the, the application to to IDE. Uh, so as, you can, as you can see, Scala is always very fast. So in this case, I am going to use IntelliJ IDEA. So I can write it project files for it. I could of course use Eclipse, but uh, this, is, this is better for Scala projects. So I'm going to import it. Okay. Not the import, I open it. <laughs> okay, now I, uh, I have the project here. So, uh, play applications consist of, of controllers and views, so it has its own MVC. Stuff. So the views are templates that actually use use Scala. Scala here. So I don't really know how to use Play, but <laughs> but, but you can see that here is some kind of template. Here is HTML, and here are controllers, which are actually this is going to respond the the requests. So. And then I have have also the uh, configuration for, for what what control, controller is going to answer to the to the request. So when a request comes to the root, then this application uh, method is called. And now we can actually start this play application by saying run here. Okay. And I can open it here. 
And the interesting part is that it's when I uh, open the page or reload the page, the the play is uh, recompiling the, the the files you have changed. So you can actually use, for example, Notepad to edit the the files, and the play is compiling it automatically. So this is now, as we can see, this is a working play application, and we can modify something from here if you want. So I don't know how to maybe uh, not this one. I have to actually modify. So I can change this to. like this and if I now reload the page we can see that it's again compiling it and now I was able to modify it okay but let's go to the body integration because it's much more interesting so <coughs> what to do to 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 add a a body application inside inside display instance. First, I need of course some dependencies. So Play uses SPT Scala build tool, so we were attending, attending to the Scala course, prob probably not the SPT. So I can add the dependencies here. So we need, of course, Vardin, uh, Scaladin, that's the Vardin uh, Frapper, uh, Scala uh, Frapper for Vardin, and also the jar file that contains the files for integrating the Vardin inside Play. These both are from my local repository, so not av av available publicly currently. And so we need dependencies. Now I have to regenerate the project files to get the dependencies to the project. So now we should have the correct dependencies in the project. So we can actually now create the uh, let's create a package for our application and then the UI class. And in this case, we are going to use stuff from from Scaladin. Okay, and let's just add a new button. So this is now uh, using the Scala in, which wraps the Vardin API inside Scala API. Okay, now we have a button that shows the notification when you click it. So now we have the UI, but we st still don't have any way to, to configure to, to, to show it in the application. So first, we need one more file inside the project, uh, global. So this is a, a class in a ob object means that it's it's singleton static, which means that we can listen the every request in the in the play application. 
by using this global and we can add this uh, mix this uh, with with this trait which means that now now that uh, we are actually able to uh, uh, move the correct re request actually to the to the to the wording play integration and now we still have to configure the actual application and we can now do it it here in the application configuration file so we can just say scaladin dot my app is the UI and then the name of the UI it's my package dot uh, my UI and then we need also the, the path of the application my app okay and now it actually should work and we could of course create more more these mappings and our application if you want but this would be enough so let's start the and see if it works. So this is the this is still the, the play page but if now I go to my app I hope that the okay it's working but currently the the wire integration is not able to serve the static files, so I actually have to copy those to the correct place. So I have the wire folder here, and then I did put it here. Okay, now it's in the correct place, and now it actually should work. Okay. So this is now Wadin application running inside the play. And as you can see it works. The next step would be to actually to, to add support for that, that we could add a Wadin application inside your play template, but it's not yet working. Uh, any questions? What just <laughs> if you don't understand, it's just you. <laughs> yeah. uh, I haven't tested it, but it should be possible. Maybe not currently, but but yeah. But if you can use Scala, why you don't? Why you want to use Java? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is not yet public, but at some point I will put it in GitHub. Yeah, thank you.